Today we're going to be talking about one of the contenders in our Enduro category and that is the YT Decoy NX Core 3. Beside me I have Cole Gregg and Nick Hall who were some of the eight riders at our crew this year. Um, they spent a lot of time on the bike, as did the rest of us. So we're gonna share some thoughts and opinions on how this bike performed. Um, of course, we are releasing individual reviews on each one of these bikes throughout the shootout series while building up to the grand finale. So uh, make sure you tune in, subscribe to the channel, and check out that grand finale episode to see where it stacks up in the end. So before we get into the ride impressions, let's talk about the Geo and spec. All right, so the YT Decoy MX Core 3 retails for $6,999. We tested a size large, which has a 449 millimeter reach, which is definitely on the small size. And I think overall we had wished that we went up to an XL. Um, the 64 and a half degree head tube angle was a pretty balanced feel overall. There's a 75 and a half degree C tube angle. The stack height is 633 millimeters. It comes with 442 millimeter chain stays and a 1,235 millimeter wheelbase. The decoy is powered by a Shimano EP8 drive unit with a custom battery that YT has sourced from uh, SMP. The display unit on this bike is the E7000 unit, which uh, is a little different than many other bikes in our shootout. Um, can't really say that there's too many negatives to that other than just the lack of color is just an all white display rather than having different colors for different power modes. Uh, it is a 165 millimeter and 170 mil front travel mulleted bike. This one comes with the Fox 38 Performance Elite fork and a Fox Float X Performance Elite rear shock. Um, uh, I think a highlight of the build for us is the Crank Brothers Synthesis wheels. SRAM Code R brakes, 200 mil rotors front and rear, and a Shimano SLX 12-speed drivetrain. The size large has a 150 dropper post and 160 millimeter crank arms. So um, first off, I guess, Cole, why don't you lead us on, on some of your impressions overall on, on how this bike performs? Sure. At so, being 6'1", and this being a very small end of the large spectrum. It definitely showed its weakness for me in some of the, the tighter, faster corners when I was trying to get the bike through and actually getting a little too far over, almost went over the bars right in front of him, but it does corner well. So it's it's kind of a balance between your size. So like, I'm, again, I'm 6'1", so having a bike that is that short allows it to be more nimble when I need it to be, but on some of the faster, high pace trails, it was definitely on the twitchy side. Um, and for me, I think the Flow X is a great option for this bike. I think of X2 would be a little overkill. The This kind of snappiness and playfulness that this bike has um, is balanced really well with that Flow X. And overall, going down, it's very lively. Um, it doesn't, I wouldn't say it's confidence inspiring as some of the other bikes are um, due to that reach number. And going up, it definitely kind of shows its weakness for me compared to a lot of these other bikes uh, and the power curve um, and, and what YT has done to get more range out of this battery. Uh, it's by no means an analog bike, but it does show its weakness on some of the steeper climbs up against these other bikes. Okay, so sizing, obviously at 6.1, you would choose an XL. 100%. Nick, 5.10? Okay, 5.11. Okay, uh, every inch counts, right? <sighs> Okay, would you choose an XL or are you happy I, with no, this? I would 100% choose an XL in this bike. The reach just feels too compact to really offer a lot of steep descending stability. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but it adds a lot to the fun, snappy feel of the bike. Yep. Like it feels like a little park bike. And I think, you know, with the mullet setup, that's probably what it's aimed at. Like that's the right rider for this bike. Somebody who wants to, just, you know, pop off little corners, have a lot of fun, and maybe not look for all out 100% speed all the time. Like I think what we agreed on is it there's very good moments of greatness where you're like, wow, that was great. Yeah. And then there are those moments like, okay, I wish I was on something longer. Yeah. Yeah. yeah especially on a trail, like not in a bike park. If you're on a tighter trail, this thing kind of shines and does a really mm -hmm. good job with an all around bike. But again, you mentioned the tune. Uh, it's definitely a downside when you're climbing with other full power D bikes, which is easy enough to get into the Shimano steps app and customize yourself. Um, 
to, to me, you know, that's, I guess, whatever. You, you can change that as it is. Uh, something that you can't really change is the bottom bracket height, which for me is definitely an issue. Um, I, I agree with you guys. I think the reach is short. It does make it kind of snappy and playful in tight, like consecutive corners. Um, if you're wanting to kind of trick and style the bike, again, it's, it is a YT. So I think a lot of people who are into that YT culture are yep. going to kind of expect that. However, I think maybe people that, you know, just kind of like that YT image, but maybe aren't that type of rider, you know, not to stereotype, but like, I think this isn't really the all day epic bike for someone who's looking to ride and pedal into the backcountry. If you're riding raw and rugged, you know, maybe multi-use trails, that low BB is is definitely going to be an issue. We'll find it. Yeah, yeah for yeah. sure. And uh, and I know we were regularly kind of hitting that bike. Even with some of the shortest cranks in the test, you're still finding the crank arm all the time. Yeah. Uh, and, and I mean, even on some of the really, you know, kind of slow speed descents and shoots where, you know, you're, you know, yeah. getting into a little slot and there's kind of rocks or tree roots sticking out on both sides. There were definitely times I was hitting the outside of my shoes on this thing. Um, but again, when you got into berms and tabletops, you know, the bike shines. So um, I think it's, it's one of those bikes that has an intended application and intended user, and that's totally fine. I, I'm all for bikes that have that. I just think everyone should probably understand that and evaluate if that application is for you. SLX drivetrain held up fine. Uh, I prefer, I prefer right? It, yeah. Yeah, it was, I, yeah, it was good. Yeah, yep. Uh, SRAM Kodar brakes. They have their drawbacks, but they did fine. Yep. Yep. They, they worked pretty well. And again, I think, um, you know, overall the bike, it has a very soft mm -hmm. and, and plush and sensitive feel, which I think was really good. Sometimes you want that, that little bit of platform and push. Yep. Um, but I also think some riders are really going to enjoy that kind of soft, supple feel. Uh, especially when kind of going through chunky, rough stuff. Um, you know, it was definitely a pretty solid bike when it came to that. I did notice on jumps, wanting, like pushing into a steep lip, wanting to have more support. So I think if you are going to ride a certain zone, this bike will behave a lot better with a little more air pressure. Mm -hmm. And volume uh, reducers. And volume yeah, you just put some reducers in. And I never got a harsh feeling out of, out of the bike, no. even with the higher air pressure we were running. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I mean, I would say it's a good, it's a good balance for someone that is that playful rider uh, and then maybe occasionally does like to go do a longer ride or get into more natural hand cut terrain. It definitely doesn't limit you from that as long as you're you're aware of the bottom bracket height. Yeah. You know, like, hey, okay, this is something that I roll on my pedal bike, but maybe this is something that I need to kind of pop over yeah. and into. Yeah. yeah. And overall, I think the bike held up really well. Yeah, there's something to be said for that. Um, we, no issues. We <laughs> have, no issues, yeah. We have beaten on these bikes uh, and yeah, we haven't had anything come loose on this bike. Nothing has broken on this bike. It is still here. We spent a lot of time on the side of the trail, limping bikes back to the van to work on them. So um, kudos to YT for getting hardware that sticks, getting battery hardware that sticks. I mean, it's that was solid. Um, and, it's and quiet we, too. It is, yeah, so we appreciate that. Um, I think overall, a solid bike, an intended application for sure. Some suspension tuning might be in order depending on your weight and riding style, but um, you know, at, at $69.99, I think it's pretty reasonably priced for what is out there today on the market. Spec is great for that price. Yeah, yeah. it is. Um, so I think overall, YT did a very good job. Overall, I think it's a solid contender and could be a great bike for a lot of folks, um, barring those couple of little you know, caveats, depending on how much time you like spending to, uh, climbing in the rough stuff. So thank you guys very much for watching the video. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. Like I said, we are going to be releasing reviews on every single bike in this shootout before we get to our grand finale episode. Hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned and we'll see you in the next one.